I'm Nigel Hammond, a senior mechanical engineer on the Diamond project here. And today we're standing on the top of the storage ring, which is where the electrons orbit. And you can see they generally follow the path that someone's kindly painted here in yellow. Each one of these concrete slabs weighs between sort of eight and 10 tons. And you can see here that there are lifting points to extract these because if we need to put in new pieces of kit, we have to get them in somehow. And the most convenient way of doing this is to have a series of these concrete beams that we can lift off. It, obviously, when we're in a shutdown period, it'll only be for about four weeks. Obviously, when we're shut down, the users who come here to do the experiments can't work and we're about providing a service for them. So we like to be up and running as often as possible throughout the year. So these are some of the concrete slabs that we've removed to give us access to the interior of the storage ring. Well, this is a section where we've had to remove a large part of the, uh, the roof. So you can see down there basically what the storage ring is made up of, which is a whole series of magnets. The red ones that you can see down there are quadrupoles, four poles, and they're used for focusing the electron beam. There are also some yellow magnets in between them called sextopoles, and they have six poles, and you can set them up into different configurations. I think between the arrays of red and yellow magnets, you can also see a green magnet there, which is just a dipole, and that has the effect of kicking the electron beam round through seven and a half degrees. And so that's what makes the overall trajectory a circle. We join up those green magnets with seven and a half degree lines, and that's pretty much your orbit of the electrons. This is where we go into the storage ring, and we have to go through a labyrinth here, because obviously we don't, in order to stop the X-rays and light escaping, we have to have a fairly tortuous route so that there's no direct line of sight. You wouldn't normally be in here at all whilst the machine is running because you get scattered, scattered radiation, highly energetic particles. It's generally not a good place for people to be whilst it's running. So in a shutdown when we can get in here, it's a time for putting in new equipment because the scientists want to do two new types of experiment and we have to put in the equipment here to enable them to do it. So this is an extruded aluminium slab, which has a hole through the middle of it, and that's pumped out to a vacuum, and that's the path the electrons take through the middle of these arrays of magnets. So here we are standing at a point where the electron beam separates from the light. So on this side, we have the light exiting through through the concrete wall into the experimental hut, which is on the other side. And on this side, we have the girders and the magnets and the electron beam carrying on on its circular route around the rest of the storage ring. So this point here behind me, is the separation between the light and the electrons. And what we have here, there's a vacuum vessel that's through which the electrons are traveling through the middle of this array here. And these little holders that you can see dotted along here hold arrays of permanent magnets that go north-south, north-south, along the direction that the beam's traveling. And they cause the beam to wiggle as it goes through. So it's setting up a, a whole series of little dipole fields. And each one of those dipole fields and each wiggle of the electron beam generates light which the scientists use for their experiments. So we're about to go and see the LINAC, which is just a short term for linear accelerator. And that's where the electrons are born and generated and start their journey towards the storage ring. So this is the cathode, and you can see it's insulated with a large piece of ceramic there. It's kept at a minus 90 kV potential, and it's really the same as a cathode that's in the cathode ray tube of an old television set. 
And so whilst it might not look like much, that's where the electrons are actually generated. And you accelerate across an electric field, and drag electrons off of the cathode, and accelerate them down the rest of the LINAC. When they go, go through the wall at this point, they go into a, what's called a booster, which again uses RF power to ramp the energy up from 100 mega electron volts to 3 giga electron volts, which is the energy that's required for the storage ring. Thank you.